is July 17th, regular session of the Oconee County Board of Education to order. First thing we need to do is we need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Mr. Burgess? Second. Second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Next, we need a motion to approve the minutes from our June 5th regular session. So moved. Mr. Hammock? Second. Ms. Parrish, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Next, we have superintendent's report. Doug Branch. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, board members, and thank you for uh, attending with a uh, what I would say is a massive crowd at our ribbon cutting for uh, Dove Creek Middle School. I want to thank uh, Fred Ricketson and the team for all the work that they did to get us to today and, uh, and build a beautiful building that, that we know we can be very proud of for many years to go. Thank Mike Eddy and his staff for uh, creating an event that, that welcomed the community. Uh, and finally, I want to thank the board for your leadership. Uh, many years ago, as we talked about in our remarks, almost a decade ago, we purchased the property, had the conversations, uh, began building Dove Creek Elementary, and now today uh, we're opening Dove Creek Middle School. And so it's a, it's a great day and one that I think we'll be able to look back on for many, many years. So uh, thank you for everyone involved, and we're, we're excited uh, for that. And somewhere Mike is saying, go Knights, right now. <laughs> uh, uh, a few other items uh, as it relates to construction, as y'all know, and, and Fred knows, we still have quite a bit going on out there. Uh, and he reminded me today uh, that even in my birthday card to him, tomorrow's Fred's birthday, so early. Happy birthday, Fred, uh, that I pointed out when school was starting. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, we know that those things are getting uh, further along and getting wrapped up, and we're excited about uh, the great work that's taking place there as well, and I know that some of that's going to be discussed tonight. Uh, we have 16 days until the school year begins for, uh, for students, and our, our staffs are starting to return. If you drive by the schools now, even though it's not officially the the days for the teachers to be back, you'll start to see cars and, and individuals coming, so it's an exciting time of year. As we begin to start, just a reminder that we do have uh, three principals, of course, Mr. Eddy uh, transitioning over from Malcolm Bridge Middle School uh, to uh, Open Dove Creek Middle School, uh, Kristen Harrison beginning her tenure at Malcolm Bridge Middle School as principal, and Jennifer Lockridge. Uh, is Jennifer with us? Okay. Um, she's working hard to prepare for a pony elementary school. Uh, so uh, we, we appreciate uh, those leaders and look forward to the great leadership that they will uh, provide. As we prepare for the start of school, uh, tomorrow we really hit the ground running. We have new family orientations at our elementary schools. Uh, with the exception of Oconee Primary and Oconee Elementary, which are going to do their new parent and new student orientations next Tuesday, the 25th, uh, as we wrap up that construction there. Our high schools are going to welcome back uh, students and events uh, beginning Wednesday, July 19th. And our middle schools have an event on Saturday, the 29th, uh, to welcome students as well. And then finally, for anybody we missed during that time period, we'll have Meet the Teacher uh, July 31st all day long at our schools and, uh, and welcome parents and students there. So a very exciting, busy time of year. I appreciate all the leaders in the room uh, and all of our staff as we prepare to welcome back nearly 9,000 students this year. That will conclude Superintendent's report unless there's questions. I would like to add that since we last met Dr. Branch, Congratulations on being the president for the Georgia School Superintendents Association, GSSA. I know you'll represent us well. Next on our agenda is presentations and discussions. First we have teaching and learning report. Dr. Stansel, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, board members. The July 2023 Teaching and Learning Report contains two items of information and no action items. The first item of information is ESOL Summer Science Discovery Camp. ESOL Summer Science Discovery Camp was held May 30th through June 8th at Rocky Branch Elementary School. 
ESOL students that just completed grades 1 through 3 were invited to attend this camp and we had 33 students in attendance. Students were exposed to scientific standards that they will see next year with a strong emphasis placed on vocabulary and academic language to prepare these students to be successful in the upcoming school year. Activities were project-based, hands-on, and allowed students to engage in the curriculum in a small group environment. On the final day of camp, parents were invited to attend and interact with their students and the class activities. Beth Parks deserves a huge thank you for her hard work in making this opportunity possible for our students. The second item of information is Meet the Teacher. As Dr. Branch just shared, Meet the Teacher will be held on Monday, July 31st at the times listed on the graphic shown at each of our schools. We are so excited to welcome our students back for another great year. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have technology. Dr. White, welcome. Good evening. The technology report for this evening has two items of information and no action items. The first informational item is an update on audio enhancement. We will be starting the 23-24 school year with audio enhancement in all of our elementary schools and with Dove Creek Middle School as our middle school pilot as well. Trainings for these new intercom systems at High Shoals and Dove Creek Middle have already begun. We're looking forward to seeing this engaging tool in the hands of our teachers and our students. The second item of information is a network management update. Our current network management is reaching end of life. The board approved a replacement Aruba Central at the November 2022 regular session. It was also approved for E-rate funding as well. This will replace our end-of-life network management and provide more detailed information about our network and a more robust guest Wi-Fi experience. And that concludes the technology report, unless there's any questions. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have business <coughs> services. Ms. Harlow, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, board members. <coughs> Business Services has seven items of information and two action items for tonight's board meeting. The first item of information is the June cash balance report. The second item of information is the ELOS collections report. The rolling average is 19% over the previous year, and this month's collections are 15% over the previous period last year. The next item of information is the board report for ELOS 5. Revenues and expenses have been updated through the end of June. The next item of information is the board report for ELOS 6. Revenues and expenses have been updated through the end of June. The fifth item of information is the general fund amendment for FY23. The FY23 revenue will grow $7.6 million more than we anticipated due to our student enrollment growth, local tax revenue, and of the $7.6 million, $2.2 million is funding for the increase in the health insurance employer contribution. This pass-through from the state for the health insurance employer contribution is also reflected in the amendment to the expenditure budget shown. As a reminder, board members, this increase went into effect January 1st, 2023 for certified employees as approved in the state's amended budget. Additionally, we were, we were able to operate within our adopted budget for expenditures as well as utilizing additional funds to start on the district-wide paving projects that were approved at the May 8th regular session. The next item of information is the federal funds budget amendment for FY23. The grant budgets have been amended to reflect the updated grant allocations and corresponding budgets that have been approved by the state. <coughs> the last item of information is an update on the tax digest. The required hearing dates and times are July 24th, one at 9 a.m. and one at 6 p.m. The third hearing will be July 31st at 5.30 p.m. Now that the final tax digest has been provided, we recommend a millage rate of 15.0 mils, 
a decrease of 0.5 mils from the tentatively adopted millage rate of 15.5 mils. Although the millage rate is decreasing due to the growth in the tax digest, we are required to have hearings. The dates and times will satisfy all requirements for the adoption of the final millage rate at the board meeting to occur on July 31st at 6 p.m. Business Services has two action items for tonight's board meeting. The first action item is the FY23 budget amendment for general fund. And the second action item is the FY23 budget amendment for federal funds. I ask that the superintendent recommend approval of both FY23 budget amendments. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Okay. Mr. Burgess? <coughs> There's a couple of questions on the amendment. Um, the $2.3 million ad for direct instruction, that's for the increase in, you said that's for the increase in employer health insurance this fiscal year? Yes, sir. Remind me, was that, is that the funding that came from the state to fully fund that increase, or is there a local component added this fiscal year as well? It's to fully fund the increase for all certified employees. Okay. For certain, okay. <coughs> And then when we get over to 24, there will be a big ad for, for that for the continuation of that increase in employer share as well. Remind me, was that all state funded as well, or is there a local component in that requirement? There's a local component for our classified employees. Okay. So this covers the cost of it for this fiscal year, but when we get to 24, there will be a local component that will have to be added in 24 to cover that full cost. Yes, sir. Um, can you talk for just a second about what's in the $3.7 million for facilities and construction? Uh, that consists of um, the construction projects that we had ongoing throughout the year um, for uh, Oconee Elementary, Oconee Primary School, um, renovations and additions, um, or sorry, renovations, um, and also for the uh, the front of those schools as well, um, and for <coughs> column ferry addition, um, high shoals addition, uh, the, the remaining portions of those projects that happened uh, at this, in the summertime of last year. So th this is bringing those revenues that we have set aside for those projects into the budget to cover the expense of those renovations? Yes, sir. Is all of that coming out of the the $8 million that we have set aside for the, those committed projects, or is this separate from that? It's coming out of that set aside. Okay, so this is coming just out of that $8 million that we have already identified and earmarked for those projects you just mentioned? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Human Resources. Mr. Cover, welcome. Thank you. Board members, before I begin with our two informational items from Human Resources, I want to take a moment and welcome our new Director of Human Resources, Dr. Lisa Manros, has joined us. She comes to us from Henry County with over 20 years of education. <laughs> She's back there. <laughs> Board members, we have two informational items for you this evening. Our first informational item is an update on our new hires for the FY24 school year. As you can see on the screen before you, we have 93 new certified hires for this school year, represented by the six positions that are listed there. Of those, if you'll note at the bottom, we have 78 new teachers. 34 of those are at the elementary level, 26 at middle, 18 at high school, and five of these are graduates <coughs> of the Oakland County School System. I know we are all pleased that they're returning home. In addition, we have 33 classified new hires represented here on the nine positions you see before you, and this represents a decrease in our vacancy rate that we are excited about. As always, in years past, we'd like to give you a glimpse of the breadth of the experience of those teachers that we have hired. You can see here before you that we have teachers ranging from both their first year in education all the way to 20 years of experience and more, and know that each of them are eager to begin their career here in Oklahoma County Schools. In addition, again, as always, we'd like to share with you the degrees that are held by our new employees. As you can see, over half, I believe it's 60% or 
a little over 60%, hold an advanced degree in the field of education. Lastly, as it relates to our certified staff, you see here where each of those members are coming from. Our new graduates represent 16 of our new hires, all of which students taught here in Oconee County Schools. While we often see a high number of employees come to us from larger districts such as Gwinnett, I think it is worth noting the number of teachers choosing to make the transition to Oconee from within our own RISA, as evidenced by the numbers from Barrow, Clark, and Jackson County. As you know, it's a very competitive market right now, and I think this speaks to the appeal of Oconee County for teachers. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our principals who are here tonight. As you know, they excel at going out and finding the absolute best for Oconee County Schools, and they've done it again this year. I can assure you that they go above and beyond in their efforts to find the very best for our students. I'd also like to recognize the HR team as they work behind the scenes as well as business services to ensure that each of these new hires is processed appropriately. I'd like to speak for a moment with each of you about a classified hiring update. Board members, we spend a great deal of time on our certified staff, but I know it is not lost on any of you the importance of the support staff who make the jobs of our teachers possible each and every day. In the past year, we have formed a recruitment and retention committee to think of creative ways to address our school's needs. With your support, many of these initiatives have been enacted, from increasing substitute pay, introducing a stellar substitute position at each of our schools, implementing paid bus driver training, and most recently, the removal of tuition for employees' children, which I'm happy to report has aided in recruitment of not only several classified staff, but also in certified staff who seek to bring their children to the same school system for which they serve. While we are seeing the positive impacts from these initiatives, board members, as you know, we have had roughly a 25% vacancy in our custodial positions for the last year. As such, we began to explore other avenues of meeting the needs of our schools. And as you know, an RFP was put out for us to seek a partner who could assist in the cleaning of our schools on an as-needed basis. I'm excited to inform you tonight that we received several responses to that request for proposal. And in speaking with our leaders, they share in our excitement for a new hybrid model and approach to meeting the needs of our buildings, while not impacting the employment of any of our current custodial staff. Human Resources second item of information. Again this year, annually, as we always do, we held a biometric screening. This was done on June 12th and 13th at North Oconee High School this year. We had more than 130 current or former OCS employees and or spouses who participated. This is an opportunity for them to come and receive a free physical, as well as obtain some points to apply towards their state health benefit that at the end of the year, hopefully they'll be able to get a reward for via it. That concludes Human Resources Report, unless there are any questions. Do you know, off the top of your head, of all the, of all the teachers we hired, how many of those were due to retirements that we were just replacing a teacher who had retired? Yes, sir. We had 18 retirements last year. And that's 18 certified retirements, yeah. not just teachers. That's principals, counselors. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have the Associate Superintendent's Report. Dr. Ledeau, welcome. Good evening, everyone. The Associate Superintendent's report contains four items of information and one action item. The first item of information is our student code of conduct. Board members, as you know, this code of conduct is reviewed annually, and we have uh, not recommended any changes, so I want you to be aware that the code of conduct will remain the same as it has been uh, in years past. The second item of information is our summer youth athletic camps. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap those up this week at North Oconee and Oconee County High School. We've had uh, 20 camps facilitated by our athletic staff and served over 1,150 participants um, at, at, at our two high schools. We really want to commend the staffs at both, both schools for providing that opportunity to our youngest Titans and Warriors. Um, as you know, they have summer programs for the high school students that they facilitate every year. These camps happen outside of the hours uh, of those, um, those summer athletic programs that they're doing for their, their current students and just give the youth an opportunity uh, to buy in and, and meet, some, meet some new people and really engage in their sport and connect outside of the, outside of the classroom. 
I'm now going to ask uh, our school nutrition director, Ms. Caitlin Brand, to come up and deliver uh, the next couple of items of information. Good evening, everybody. Uh, today I wanted to announce a special thing that the state of Georgia is doing for us. They're going to pay for reduced price meals this school year, which means anybody that qualifies for reduced meals will receive them for free this school year. So that's not up here, but <laughs> that is something new that we're very excited about. So uh, the item information number three, we have a comparison of our average daily participation from school year 18-19. This is because that's the last school year that we accepted applications. And as you can see, that we increased breakfast and lunch. Uh, we also increased in our total meals served, about 50,000 more meals served this previous year. Year. And alongside serving more meals, uh, we concentrate a lot on our food safety. And I'm proud to say that we have an average health score across the district of 98.7, and that's with 12 perfect hundreds um, across the district. So we're really excited about that. And lastly, uh, we partner with Georgia Educational Cooperative, which is a, a group of counties that bid out different services and products. We actually have five with GEC, and that includes paper, sanitation, grocery, milk, and produce. Thank you, Ms. Brand. The action item on the Associate Superintendent's report is our school nutrition program FY24 bids that Ms. Brand just described. Board members, you have before you the bid tabulation that shows you the winning bidder for, um, for each product. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve the school nutrition program at 524 bids as presented. That concludes the associate superintendent's report, unless there's any questions. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Fargo. Welcome, uh, board members and Dr. Branch. Um, tonight, for student services, we have two items of information and no action items. The first item of information is our ESY, which is our extended school year program that we offer special education students in Oconee <coughs> County. That was held at Rocky Branch this summer. So I want to uh, commend Sarah Johnson, the principal of Rocky Branch, for welcoming our students um, in her school for the month of June. And also the, commend the teachers and the support staff that uh, work with our students through the month of June as well. The second item of information is the first year that we did the Educators Externship Project. Um, we worked in conjunction with the Technical College of Georgia and the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Uh, we had six educators. We had three from North Oconee, we had two from Oconee High School, and one from Oconee Middle School. They ranged from counselors, special ed teachers, and CTAE teachers. The educators had the opportunity to observe and interact with businesses and give them real life industry um, experience that they were able to bring back to their schools. Through this program, the educators worked together to create portfolios and featured summaries of the businesses. They were able to look at an overview of at least four different occupations that could be found within that industry, information regarding post-secondary options for our students, and also looking at their policies on soft skills that we can help support our students with. There were 10 businesses that were supported during this week-long um, internship. They range from advanced uh, manufacturing, we had ABB, we had biotech with alloy therapy, we had um, hospitality with um, the Classic Center, and then we also had Piedmont Athens Regional that worked along with the healthcare. So all of the six teachers found it extremely beneficial, well, and the counselor, and all have asked to be a part of the program next year as well. But that concludes the report for student services unless there's any questions. Thank you. Next we have operations. 
Mr. Hey. Rickardson, before you get started, I just want to thank you and your staff. <laughs> Mr. Eddie, it was magnificent. It, I think the uh, that end of the county that came in, and I think most of that end of the county did come in. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you. It's, it's been a uh, real treat to get, have the opportunity to be a part of such a great project. Good evening, board members of Dr. Branch. Uh, the Oconee County Schools Operations Division July Board of Education report contains two items of information and two action items. The first item of information is the energy report. It's been updated for the month of May, showing an on-trend increase in usage. The second item of information is our construction update. As you all got to see and enjoy uh, Duff Creek Middle, uh, we are we are really close to the finish line. We are doing some punch list items, uh, but we are ready for school. Uh, and uh, we're finishing uh, knocking, knocking out some uh, little miscellaneous things that, are, that need to be done, but uh, we're ready. So we're very excited about that, about that facility. Uh, the next, oh, did somebody help me? <laughs> 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 okay, the next is Oconee Primary School, Oconee Primary, Oconee Elementary, and Oconee High School Phase 2 modifications. As you can see, uh, that we've got off to a slow start, but we are wide open now uh, and uh, getting the, the, uh, the canopies installed, uh, curb and gutter installed. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there, this picture was taken this morning, that picture was taken this afternoon. Um, thank you. Thank uh, Steve has started taking our pictures. They're so much better. Thank you so much. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, making great progress, and I assure you that they all know when school starts, and we will be ready. Uh, the next is uh, Instructional Support Center. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the, the yellow vapor barrier is on the ground. Uh, about 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, concrete will start going on the ground, and uh, by next week you'll start seeing steel come out of the ground. So we're making great progress at the Instructional Support Center. Uh, Malcolm Bridge Elementary, as you can see, the steel structure's in place. Uh, off to the right of the photograph, you can see what they call light gauge metal trusses. Those will start going in next week uh, as the building continues to stay, take shape and, and uh, gets ready for next school year. Uh, paving. We've been doing a lot of paving. Uh, again, uh, Steve took this picture about 5 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, but the striping is, the paving is done, the striping's in, and that is transportation ready for the buses to come home. If you notice them on it. And just an update on all, all the paving. Uh, Dove Creek Elementary School is complete with the exception of striping, which has happened this week. North Oconee High School is complete without striping, with the exception of striping. Mountain Bridge Elementary and Mountain Bridge Middle are complete with the exception of striping. Uh, transportation is complete. Oconee High School is complete with the exception of the front parent drop-off, which will have, which is going to get paved tomorrow. Oconee Middle, Oconee Elementary, and Oconee Primary is scheduled to pave this week with striping next week. So, uh, the, and the timing of that really falls into place with the other. Uh, work that's going on so that they're not pouring concrete and using heavy equipment on top of our brand new paving. So it's all coming together just in time for the school year. Uh, Fred, is there, is there, after the primary and elementary school are done, is, is, is that pretty much it? We, all the paving that we talked about doing will be finished? Yes, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. Uh, the last thing I have here is uh, um, for the update is uh, high school tennis courts. Uh, the materials are on order uh, because it's electrical items that tend to be really slow. Uh, with that said, though, we're starting the work uh, doing our underground piping and getting our underground work done before school starts back uh, in a couple of weeks. Action items. Our first action item is for custodial services. Uh, this, uh, just to give you a little background, we did a competitive-based uh, selection process on this. We, we did a public advertisement. We had a great number of, uh, of vendors come out to participate in our pre-proposal conference. There was 10 submittals of proposals. We reviewed those and scored them as we do most of our, most of our projects. Uh, and Supreme Maintenance Organization was the clear winner. 
Um, the way the proposal is set up is it's set up so that we can scale up or down by school as we as we see fit as necessary to supplement our, our existing custodial staff. Uh, the the actual program, if we choose to to bring in SMO for a particular school, we will still have a full time Oconee County Schools employee on day shift and this organization will come in at night and do the cleaning of the building. So we have our day shift uh, custodian who would do daily activities, routine cleaning, serve lunchroom duty, all the things that needs to happen, and then at nighttime, uh, the SMO would come in and clean our schools. So this was a competitive base selection, and this is how we arrived at Supreme Maintenance Organization. It's the superintendent's recommendation is for the board to issue a contract to Supreme Maintenance Organization for as-needed custodial services for FY24. This also uh, contract has the ability to renew up to four times. The second action item is uh, Malcolm Bridge Elementary School Addition Furniture. Uh, it's the superintendent's recommendation is for the Board of Education to approve the purchase of classroom furniture for Malcolm Bridge Elementary School Addition from Ernie Morris Enterprises for a total of $96,768.67. That concludes my report. Unless there are any questions, any questions, Mr. Burgess. Um, this, Jason, this, may, this question may be better directed towards you. Do we have sort of a, a baseline estimate of what we would expect this contract to cost on an annual basis? So it's really done per school okay, well that's kind uh, of the as part. we as we push in, and so we're still determining the specific number of schools that will. Participate. That was the second part of the question. Do you, do you have an idea of which schools we would probably start with at the beginning of the school year, or is that? Yeah. Or? Yes, sir. We we believe we'll start with about five elementary schools and two middle schools in this process, based on feedback and requests from our principal leaders. We'll start with those at the beginning of the school year, and then go from there. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you? Can you make a point then of coming back, say, in, in, after the, after the, in the November or December, and let us know sort of how this first semester went, and what the costs were, and what we what we think it achieved, or how it how performed? Absolutely. Right. Thank you. So, in addition to that, you can also come back to share how it's working. I mean, is the are the principals pleased with the performance, and if not, how do we manage that? Sure, we'll, we'll give you guys some updates on that and, and give you some, some cost estimates as well once we are able to live it a little bit. Let me ask you though, this is, is this going to change our approach, or is this going to change our our effort to try to hire additional custodial staff when, when we can? I, mean, I know that's been a, an issue we've dealt with for a while now. How is, how is this going to affect our approach to trying to hire custodial staff? Yeah, our, our principals and HR department are continuing to seek uh, custodians at all levels, and, and we continue to, to share with the company that we'll be continuing to recruit this. This is uh, specifically to meet a need based on the vacancies uh, that, that we currently have and the honest inability for us to find staff to fill those vacancies. Okay, great. Thanks. Yes, sir. Where are they based out of, and do they clean other schools? or? The uh, SMO, a Supreme Maintenance Organization, they they actually just bought out a local vendor called Classic City Solutions, uh, and uh, they've been they historically have cleaned uh, Prince Avenue. Remember the other one? There's another private school, St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's, and so we actually uh, formed a, a relationship with them on a temporary basis this past spring uh, to to test them out. And so uh, it, during that course of time, they were actually acquired by Supreme Maintenance Organization. And one of the things that, that really impressed us was within their submittal package, how they, they really showed how the two organizations have are like-minded and, and, and common vision for how the business should operate and, and perform. And, and so we, we felt like they were a really good fit for us. So yes, there is a local component. And are those projects going to be done by the start of the school year? We have complete faith in you now after some Absolutely. death creek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
birds always feel comfortable asking about the ranch questions instead of me. I love it. <laughs> Fred, if you could stay after. <laughs> Next, we have communications. <laughs> oh, welcome. Thank you, board members. Uh, good to see you again. We, we had a, a great uh, uh, time together earlier today at, uh, at Dove Creek Middle School. Um, as the ribbon cutting was taking place, uh, I had a, a young man to my right, and I could hear him say, this is so cool, we're a part of history. Aww. So we're all a part of history from today, and it's exciting to be, to be a part of that. But uh, thank you for being there. Thank you for... We're estimating three to four hundred people came out. Uh, it was kind of hard to tell, but once we uh, finished the 13-minute program, they all ran for the air conditioning. So <laughs> we, did, we did have a good time getting inside and cooling off. But uh, what, what a great, uh, what a great moment uh, for Dove Creek. What a great moment for our school system. So very excited about that. Our second uh, item of information for communications tonight is the annual report. Um, pleased to say that it's currently at the printer and will be going in the mail on Monday and be delivered to all of our Oconee County house, households. It's a great opportunity for us to highlight uh, the uh, successes of another uh, fantastic school year. We're excited about getting that in everybody's hands. And that concludes communications, unless there are any questions for me. Thank you. Next, we have communications to the board. Do we have anyone signed up? We do not. No, no one signed up for this evening. I don't know, we've got a new system or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that Miss Gaddy's not having to She's <laughs> control <free>. everything. <laughs> it's a wonderful night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to whoever made that happen. <laughs> All right, next we have action items. Dr. Branch. Yes, ma'am. Uh, board members, I do want to thank uh, Steve and Ryan for working with the team to set up this new presentation. Uh, for our board meetings. Uh, we'll work to uh, make it better and better, but we believe that it's an enhancement as to what we were doing prior, and so I appreciate their work on that. I did neglect to say that earlier, so thank you everyone for their work in that area. Uh, we do have a couple of action items, as has been noted. Uh, one that uh, I want to make sure the board is aware of is the local school board training plan for 23-24. As you know, we do this annually. And that plan uh, it has been attached for your review, as has the ethics uh, contract that each of you sign as board members each year. So we would recommend approval of this plan as presented. We need a motion to do so. Yes, Mr. Chair, let me ask a question about that. If some of our board members need more training than others, is there, are we still able to adjust this later? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this a while. Yeah. I think he's asking for himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like traditional. Move approval. Mr. Burgess? Second. Mr. Hammock, all in favor? Passes 5 0. Okay, up next we would recommend Supreme Maintenance Organization provide as-needed custodial services for the FY24 year as presented. We need a motion to do so. Motion to approve. Mr. Ransom? Second. Ms. Parrish, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Okay, next we'd recommend Ernie Morris Enterprises with a proposed bid of $96,768.67 for the purchase of classroom furniture for the Malcolm Bridge Elementary School. Motion. So moved. Mr. Hammock? Second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 5 0. Please, as the board, we can take uh, the next two items together uh, both the uh, general fund, federal, uh, general fund amendment, budget amendment, as well as the federal fund to budget amendment. We would recommend approving those as presented. Need a motion? Recommend approval of both, both amendments as presented. Mr. Burgess? Second. Ms. Parrish, all in favor? Passes 5-0. We do have a need to move into executive session and do need a motion to do so. I'll make a motion that the board will adjourn to executive session to discuss or deliberate upon personnel matters as described on the affidavit to be attached to the minutes. Thank you. We need a second? Second. Mr. Hammond, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Okay, we'll take a few minutes to clear the room, board members.